So now we've seen how to solve this kind of profit maximization problem in the short run. We take the derivative, we set that derivative equal to zero, and then we solve for the choice variable, which in this case is the choice is how much labor to use. Okay, that will all work if the second order condition is negative, which it we don't really even have to check that if we have assumed that marginal product of labor is diminishing. All right, quick summary of that's a quick summary of what we've done. Notice that the solution though is we're trying to find L, and I had used the the phrase sort of that it's a choice the lab, the firm has to make. And it's, in this case, the only choice. Right? They have to choose how much, what quantity to make. They have to choose sort of how much profit to get. But it's all dependent on their choice of labor, at least in this model, where they're not like, we don't have any weird complications, OK? So if they find the amount of labor, and we know that they're going to use the production function, then we can figure out from that how much output and from that how much profit they make. Okay, in this case, we say that L is an endogenous variable, and this is a term we got to learn. And because that endogenous variable L determines uh, Q and profit, they're endogenous too. Okay. So what does this term endogenous mean? It means it's a variable that we have to find. It's like a choice variable, and we have to use our model and our assumptions about how people behave to figure out what it is. All the other variables in this problem, which include the price P, the wage rate W, the rental rate R, but also in this case the capital stock K, are not endogenous. We don't try, we're not trying to find them. Instead, we're taking those as given. In fact, we can't find L if we don't know P. We can only find uh, how it depends on P. But if we don't have the exact price, we won't be able to find the exact L. So P, W, R, and K have to be given to us for us to solve the problem and to find the endogenous variables. These ones are called exogenous variables. Okay, so endogenous variables are variables whose value is determined inside the model we're using to understand uh, a situation. In this case, the situation we're trying to understand is how does a f how much labor should a firm make? How much quantity should it supply? How much profit does it get? These are the questions we're trying to answer, and to answer it, we're saying we're going to assume that they maximize profit. And we're going to assume that these prices of wage rate uh, of labor, capital, and the output are all given to us. And because it's a short run problem, we're also assuming it's told to us how much capital they have. That's not a choice variable we have. Those variables are called exogenous. They come from outside the model. Okay? They have to, they just come from outside, and this model does not determine their value. If you want to know why the price is equal to P or you know some particular value, why the wage rate is, you need a different model. That's not what this little one is for. And this distinction between endogenous and exogenous variables is something that's going to come up over and over again. And it's labels we use to describe different variables. And don't be fooled to th in thinking that like, all right, labor is always an endogenous variable. Uh, Q and pi or profit are always endogenous and everything else is exogenous. Every single situation or unit we cover is going to have like different endogenous and exogenous variables. Sometimes the price will be endogenous because we're going to be studying a situation where firms have to choose the price. And if they're choosing it, it's not given to us from outside the model, then it becomes an endogenous variable. Or at least that's the term we use to describe it. So hopefully this gets more clear as we go through some more examples. But essentially, exogenous variables are ones that have to be handed down to us. We use them to solve for endogenous variables. So in this particular case, at the end of the day, we end up with a function, or the amount of labor we choose 
will turn out to be some kind of function, which I'm calling L with a squiggle over it, but you could use an F or whatever. It's just a, a function. And inside that function are the price, the wage rate, the capital rental rate, maybe, and the capital stock. In this case, actually, this guy's not going to turn out to be in there, but uh, that's because it's not inside, uh, like, because the capital stock is fixed, so it's not going to uh, determine, like, what the rental rate is doesn't determine anything about labor in this case. It's kind of a subtle point that we can come back to in the future. The main point is that the endogenous variable L is a function of the exogenous ones, okay? In the last video, we did an example where we solved for L and we had P given to us. We had all the other, all the variables that were told they were given number variables were exogenous ones. And then the problem was to solve and find the value that is implied by that for the remaining variables, which are endogenous.